survive. What are you doing? What was that music? Look, I need to finish this. Why? What are you doing? I'm writing a piece for this girl Remembrance radio broadcast next week. What? Remembrance Day. Surely even you have heard of that. Oh, I think so. The Battle of Britain and all that. Well, yeah. But I'm concentrating on World War One, The Somme and Ypres and it's a long way to Tipperary and all of that. Oh, right. Well, what was that music? It's called And the Band Played Waltz and Matilda. It's by some Scottish folk singer. But surely Waltz and Matilda was Australian. That's right. He wrote it about the Battle of Gallipoli in Turkey. It cost the New Zealand and Australian forces over a quarter of a million casualties. The song tells the story of a guy that signs up, gets wounded, and the way he and the rest of the wounded were treated when they got back. When I was a young man, I carried my pack and I lived the free life. Are you two coming down or no? It's like Glasgow Central in here. Hi. Oh, hey. We're doing this remembrance thing for the radio. Oh, we are, aren't we? Well, you know, I thought you could give us some extra help. Like, Why not start with this? Well, I didn't know that. Between 1914 and 1918, 8,538,315 members of the armed forces were killed and over 12.5 million were wounded and some have since noticed after the wars the wounded and maimed were not always treated as the heroes that they were. What does that mean? The bit about not being treated as heroes? That's what the end of the song's about. My city old man all twisted and torn The forgotten heroes of a forgotten war And the young people ask me What are they marching for? And I ask myself the same question To be fair, I suppose we're all guilty of that Not understanding what they went through Listen, look at this. This guy was from a battle in pa pa Pass Passchendaele. It's in Belgium. In Flanders, between October 1914 and March 1915, that's six months, there were only 18 days without rain. That's five and a half months of solid rain. Listen, listen to this. The trenches literally filled up with water. Sometimes sleeping soldiers sank into the mud and were never seen again. Fifteen men from one guard's battalion were drowned in the mud in the winter of 1914. The following could have been written by any soldier at Passchendaele, describing the true horror of the situation. I don't think any of us can remember what it was like. I don't like. think any of us can remember what it was like to be dry. We've been fighting nearly three years now. And I honestly don't think we've moved more than a couple of miles in any direction. The rain is constant and the mud just gets deeper and deeper. Last night I was out on patrol. The Germans sent a flare up, lit up the land for miles. I had to crawl back to our lines. Everywhere I passed, my left and my right were dead men lying on the ground. The shells, they pull them up from the mud, you see, all bloated and rotten in pieces. Our captain tells of a soldier that fell off the wooden walkway. He just sank slowly till he disappeared. He didn't even have the strength to pull himself back. It's a standing order now, we're not to help any up fall in in case we upset the narrow planks. His comrades just had to watch him sink out of sight. As the days pass the ground becomes one stinking mass of mud and rotten human flesh. As the shell holes fill up, they turn a sort of rotten yellow colour. The stink is indescribable. How's Dad? We both thought this would be over by the first Christmas. I thought it would be last year at the most. Who'd have thought that they'd let this hell go on for longer than a year? That's good. We can use that. Good. You know what I mean? 
got to use this. So, just look at it. What do you mean? Well, look, read it for yourself. I never raised my boy to be a soldier. I brought him up to be my pride and joy. Who dares to lay a gun upon his shoulder and teach him how to kill another mother's boy? I never raised my son to be a soldier. I brought him up to stay at home with me. There would be no war today if every mother would say, I never raised my boy to be a soldier. That's really good, yeah. Though I can't see groups of mothers stop wars. Well, why not? Eh? What? Well, I know a gaggle of mums isn't going to stop anything, but if, if everybody said no, then what could they do? What if they gave a war and nobody came? I saw that written somewhere. That's quite good. Well, I think the mothers, well, and the fathers too, they should get recognition. After all, they lost everything too. I trust you to think of that. Well, they did. In that case, hang on. It's here somewhere. I think I left it next door. by Constance Powell. An open drawer, a woman lowly kneeling, some little crimson shoes, a lock of hair, some childish toys, an engine and a trumpet, a headless horse, a battered teddy bear, some schoolboy books, all inky, torn and thumb marked, a treasured bat, his favourite cricket ball, the things he loved, the letters that he wrote her. And now she places on top of all a soldier's sword, his photograph in khaki. The boyish eyes smile back into hers, mm -hmm. while in her hands she holds a VC tightly, and in her heart a grave in Flanders lies. Mm. At least she has the VC. You're an idiot. Hey, I was only saying. Good as a Victoria's Cross if you've lost your only son. Alright, alright, calm down. Well. Anything else cheery and heartwarming? You're right, she is an idiot. Oh, not this one. What? What do you mean? That's a brilliant poem. One of the greatest war poems written by Wilfred Owen. I you know, Anthem for Doomed Youth. We did it in English. Never understood a word of it. I mean, what are orisons? That's an old word for prayers, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Look, I'll show you. See that? Yeah. Well, that's called the Teepval Memorial of the Missing. And it's a monument to the 72,194 officers and men of the United Kingdom and South African forces. These men died in the Somme battle sector before the 20th of March 1918 and have no known grave. Why have they no grave? Because you can't bury bits. These were soldiers that were either blown to bits or like at Passendale were drowned in the mud and rotted away before their families could see them be buried. They had no funeral. They were just missing. Never seen again. That's what the poem's about. It's talking about how these soldiers had no prayers for them. 
there were no choirs or church bells and no candles or flowers. Just a constant noise of battle. What passing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns, only the stuttering rifles' rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers nor bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells, and bugles calling for them from sad shires. What candles may be held to speed them all? Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pal, the flowers the tenderness of patient minds, and slow dusk a drawing down of blinds. I think that's us done. We'll get this lot sorted and then we can record it tomorrow. Good. I'm starving. Can we hang on a minute? What? Can we... Look, I know this sounds stupid and that, but... I mean, after all we've been talking about, can we just sit? For a minute. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, all right. And, yeah, mm. it's not stupid. We went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end of it against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. <laughs>